Um, right now we have the author Emily Sue Harvey. It is so good to have you with us tonight. Pleasure. <laughs> now, uh, you just came out with this book, Cocoon. Uh, now, you were mentioning to me that you also have two books that just hit Amazon's bestseller list. National that was a bestseller. National bestseller. <laughs> And that is a uh, home fires and under these hills. That's right. That is that, that is awesome. How does that feel to have that happen? Well, kind of unreal at times, but um, God is good, and uh, it feels awesome. It really does. It, it's very humbling. Mm -hmm. It's very humbling to to know that God has allowed this to happen, and I feel very like the uh, brother in the uh, first segment. He said, you know, when God gives you a gift, you, you feel so much more accountable. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I have to be a good steward of what I write. And you know, um, I hope you don't mind, I brought me a few little things that I wanted to say because sure. the, I, write, I write about spiritual warfare and I write it in a uh, secular ven venue. And uh, that's quite challenging. You know, I am so glad you mentioned that. That was actually what I, I, I had made a Were note because you, uh, you had uh, I had read something on your web page where you said you don't write religious books. You said you are a Christian that writes books. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of times there are people out there, whatever their gift is, they're trying to figure out how to use it in a uh, in a in a way that is religious, but that mm -hmm. it's not usually what God wants you to do because the people that you're wanting to reach are not in the, right. <laughs> they're not in, not in the fold. Absolutely. And so you need to be able to reach Absolutely. those people. I don't want to throw up red flags where people say, well, I don't want to, no, I don't think I'm going to read that. Uh, in fact, I've had some people who, who um, will leave comments at Amazon and, uh, you know, I guess you say critiques and they'll say, well, you know, when I picked up this book, I didn't know what to expect. But it really kind of, and, and then one guy said, uh, I don't usually read religious uh, books. And so I didn't really know what to expect because he had seen somewhere that someone had commented that, that, uh, that my books were inspirational. And that is happening even though I'm not in that category mm -hmm. per se. But God is bringing it about anyway. Right. So, so it's, uh, it's really a blessing to, to have that happening. So you know, I'm being true. I'm being true to what God has called me to do. And here's one thing I want to say is that the Holy Spirit edits everything I write, mm -hmm. every page, every paragraph, every line, every word that I write. And I just, I just praise Him for it. You let Him use you. Absolutely. Because it's a, a gift that he's put inside of you. Yeah. You know, um, I, I've actually been working on something that I've been writing, and I've been writing it for a while. You're definitely a writer because, gosh, I get to these blocks, and then I kind of go back, and I'm real bad to rewrite things. I always hear that you're supposed to just you're supposed to just write it and then go back, but I'm so bad to sit there and I'll rewrite the first sentence 13 or 14 times <laughs> instead of getting the stuff on there. But you know, when I was sitting here looking, uh, we were talking about you being on the national bestseller list. Mm -hmm. That would just be, uh, just be so surreal because you know that something's out there that God has used you and given you that gift. And you probably remember the hours sitting there typing it up. Mm -hmm. And and now, it, you know, it's it's out there and you think, man, I remember when that was just words on a screen. I mean, mm -hmm. that's got to be amazing. Well, you know, the, the strange thing about writing, it's a very, very lonely, solitary calling, except when I sit down, the Holy Spirit is with me. But it's like you take nothing mm -hmm. and have to create something. And I don't know of anything that is more nothing than just sitting down with a blank screen mm -hmm. with a little cursor. Just blinking at you. <laughs> and I pray, every time I sit down, I pray, Lord, please help me, give me the words and the, uh, the ideas. Even when I'm plotting, I ask God to help me. And, um, and he's been faithful. He's been very faithful. That, you know, that is so huge because uh, a lot of times people think, well, God only cares about Sunday when I'm at church or yeah. Wednesday when I'm at church. Yeah. But the thing is he wants to impact every 
part of our life. He wants us to be saved so he can impact every part Absolutely. of our life. So, I mean, even if you're in, uh, somebody's in business, I mean, he wants to be a part of that business. Absolutely. And he gives us those ideas. Uh, yeah. Tell us how you came about writing Cocoon and about the okay. Turner story. Okay, that was interesting. Uh, my husband and I went to eat at Pete's. Uh, and we don't usually go there, but we went to eat at Pete's one day. And as we were eating, I looked across the, uh, the dining room and I saw Gerald and Kay Turner. We had all gone to school together. In fact, we graduated with uh, Gerald's wife. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, well, I'm going to go over and speak to them. But I noticed that Kay was not saying anything. And uh, so I walked over. Well, Gerald's always friendly. He's just just always friendly and and so I said I started chatting with him but I noticed that Kay kept turning her head and when I would try to make eye contact it was like it was almost painful for her and I thought something is really wrong so when I returned to my table I told Lee I said you know that's not the Kay that that I knew in school and um, I said something's really wrong maybe dementia or something, mm. because it was that severe. So um, then a few days later, I saw Gerald's sister, and I said, I said, Shelby, what's wrong with Kay? And she said, well, it's really, really sad. It's really tragic, but she's got, it was actually a psychosis, and she'd had it for several years at that time. And um, she said, they don't, they don't think she's going to ever come out of it. I said, well, you know, I, I, I knew something serious was wrong. And so then later, fast forward, uh, maybe two or three years, maybe more, I, we saw them at Ryan's. Lee and I were eating at Ryan's. And Kay was laughing and talking and uh, engaging with people. And I thought, something's happened. So I go over to her and I said, Kay, what happened? And she looks at me and smiles. She said, oh, it's a miracle. It's just a miracle. I said, well, I want to know your story. <laughs> I want you to tell me your story. So we spent some time together, and she began to share all of this, and, and Gerald, and oh, my goodness, what a, what a testimony. And I said, would you, would you mind me doing your story? You know, using it. If you don't want me to. You knew that fast. That you yeah, I knew this. this had to be told. So she said, I mean, she didn't hesitate. She said, sure, I would be honored if you would use my story. She says, if it will help anybody, I don't mind you using it. I said, well, you know, it's not a thing of money involved because I'm not really, I mean, it's, that's, that's a fable about writers, you know, getting rich if they get on the bestseller list. No, uh, that's not happening. But I said, you know, it's, it's, it would just, I would, acknowledge you though and she says listen honey I don't care about that just use it if it'll help somebody mm -hmm. so uh, so that's how it came about so I did I do put my stories in in a uh, fictional setting mm -hmm. I do change the names but in this one it was a little difficult because I just couldn't get Gerald away from being a minister of music so in the book, he is a minister of music. <laughs> so, so uh, he's it's, giving me the thumbs up. Over yeah, there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but that, it worked good like that. Now, it worked real good. For for those at home that may be watching, can you explain to them what psychosis is? Well, in Kay's case, she had taken a drug um, that reacted. It was it was. Um, um, uh, prednisone? Prednisone. Oh, prednisone. Steroid, prednisone. It was a steroid psychosis. It's very rare, but some people will develop this. I mean, like I said, it's very rare, uh, a very rare side effect. And I don't want to give it a bad name, but, uh, but it is called um, a steroid psychosis. Mm -hmm. And in it, well, folks will have to read this book to really get the full impact of what it did to her. But it, she was just totally within, I think, three days after, after this began to react, she was just totally in a different world, mm. in a different world. And this went, this went on for several years. I mean, they really have a, have a, a, a testimony. 
And the beautiful thing was that Gerald stood by her through the whole thing. And she wanted to be here so much tonight because she'll always say, anybody else, any other man would have walked out. But my husband stood with me, stayed with me, and worked through that with her. Uh, and she was not supposed to be, uh, to come out of this. In fact, Dr. Jack Jackson is her doctor, and he wrote an affidavit as to this being a real miracle. Mm. And uh, so. That is awesome. Yeah. Whenever you can get a doctor to write off Absolutely. on some of that. Now, you had um, had something that you had um, mentioned about your daughter's death. Yes. And how it changed your life. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, you can say that my, that my writing was born out of a valley. And that valley was when uh, my husband was pastoring in Marion, South Carolina, back in the 70s. And our 11-year-old daughter, Angela, went home with a church family. And while she was there, we had only been there six months. How old was she at this time? She was 11. And uh, I had some misgivings about letting her visit. I didn't know everybody that well. But then, you, you know, you, you get under this pressure that, hey, they're going to think you're standoffish, that you, you, that you know, that you're not loving. And so I, I let her go. I, in fact, she and my other daughter, who was 13, went to visit with these two, two teenage girls. And while they were there, they lived in a depot building next to the railroad tracks. And um, the, the older girl took my daughter for a walk down on the trestle, and a train came. And both the girls were killed. And um, it, was, it was so devastating. It was so oh devastating goodness. that I didn't think I could survive it. But you know what? God threw me a lifeline through writing. I had always enjoyed writing. But he threw me this lifeline, and I was in my senior English course in college. I was an English major. And my uh, professor told me, he said, uh, that I could, uh, I could use my writing, just not drop out. I was going to drop out of school because I didn't think I could, you mm. know, could handle it. So he said, okay, he said, you, uh, you can write what your feelings are. I said, well, if you'll let me do that, I will, I will keep coming to school. You know, I won't drop out. So I, I wrote and I wrote and I wrote down my feelings. It sort of was a purging. And I wrote for three years on that manuscript. So that started it. Mm. That was the start of my writing. But it really saved my sanity. Mm. And it gave me a gift. It gave me a ministry. That is, you know, I, I have an aunt that, that um, lost um, her son when he was just a baby. And uh, another guy that I know um, from a, a, a local business, he lost his after six months. It's just... I can't imagine mm -hmm. going through that. But, you know, you have to have the Lord uh, to turn those, those things into triumph. And, to, and it's amazing how God can bring something great out of something that He thinks is going to destroy you. Absolutely. Uh, we are with author Emily Sue Harvey, and we're talking about her new book, Cocoon, right now. And, uh, we have Gerald Turner, who has also joined us. Thank you for being here with us. Glad to be here. Uh, now, your wife Kay could not be with us here tonight. No. Uh, she's had a little bit of a health problem, and she was singing in the choir Sunday. Uh, we were presenting our Christmas music, and she, uh, she passed out, and she uh, fell and injured her back a little bit. Mm. So she's in a good bit of pain tonight. So I know a lot of people are counting on seeing her, but... Uh, she couldn't make it tonight because of that. Well, we will, um, I'm, I'm gonna m make a note on the, uh, the back of one of these so that, you know, at the end, whenever we pray, we definitely wanna pray for, for Kay Turner. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I do wanna mention before we uh, get back into talking about the book, I love when we get these blue pieces of paper because that means somebody's called in and uh, it says that this is a, a, a Mr. Richard Black and uh, he just came back to God tonight. So we just give God Amen. praise for that. I tell you, there's 
no better place to be than in the kingdom of God. Amen. That's right. That's right. We can't do it on our own. And you know, the what you were just telling me uh, that you had went through, Miss Harvey, with your with your daughter. I mean, it it takes God to go through something wow. like that. Um, it I, does. I, now, you had mentioned earlier that your uh, your husband, I think uh, Leland, mm -hmm. uh, he he, uh, he was a preacher. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you evolve from a preacher's wife? To a writer? <laughs> well, through a lot of work. <laughs> through a lot of work. Uh, well, I was an English major in college and thought I was going to teach. But when, when Angie uh, died, God had other ideas. So I had to um, rethink some things. And so I began to write and I began to do short stories. Uh, got involved in a writer's workshop and was on the board of directors, was president there and, and uh, just met a lot of super people. And, but to make a long story short, it was just through writing. And what I did, I'd take vignettes of life that I would see God in and I would create the short stories from, from life. Mm. Um, and when I started writing fiction, that was a little different. Uh, like I said, you take nothing and, and, and you create something with the help of the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, um, the stories got me going and then God just, he waited a while, but then he got, then he in recent years uh, brought me into contact with uh, two wonderful guys in New York who loved my writing and who decided to that they wanted to, to help me build a career. Mm. So both of them uh, have, have been instrumental in helping me. And they always told me that when they, they were gonna form their own publishing house together. And uh, so they wanted me to be one of their authors. So that's what happened. So all at once, I got a, a six book contract. And I mean, it was just fantastic. I mean, it was unbelievable. And it's, then it's amazing how God will push the oh fast my forward goodness. on your yeah, life, you know. Absolutely, and it just it just floored me. So I I did the six books, and uh, and I'm working on the seventh one now. And the way I get my stories, it's like with with uh, Kay and and Gerald. I've got a shirt at home, and and I've got a plaque on my wall that says "Your story begins at home," but I've got a shirt that says careful or you'll end up in my novel. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. Everybody. And uh, if you live long enough, you're going to go through some valleys. Mm -hmm. And I write about those valleys because I want, God has called me to write about the, the, the dark times in people's lives when they have, they get to the place where they have to depend on Him. Mm -hmm. All my books have those components of maybe betrayal, um, uh, tragedy, uh, love, uh, forgiveness, and redemption. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I don't write it in religious terms, so it catches people unaware. Now, you, um, you had mentioned trauma just now. We were just talking about Kay, who, mm -hmm. uh, who had failed, but you actually had uh, a, a little trauma earlier it's this year, trauma. didn't you? A big trauma. <laughs> yeah, it was a big trauma. <laughs> this was a few months ago? It was 10 months ago, and I fell down backwards down 14 stairs Good in my home. Night. Mm. And when I got to the bottom, all the way down though, I was saying, Jesus, help me. Help me, Lord. Mm. And when I got to the bottom, I leveled out, and my head went through the sheetrock wall. Now, you know how hard sheetrock is. Mm -hmm. My head went through it up about halfway. Mm -hmm. Lee happened to be at home and he did come and get my head out, you know, ease my head out. And I, I had thought that God was through teaching me, you know, how to go through dark times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he had that one more lesson. So I had to go through another valley. So, it, I mean, it's been, it was slow. It was a difficult recovery. I had to wear a neck brace. I fractured my neck. Mm. I have six or eight screws in this right ankle and a steel plate. And I had a, another fracture at my knee. And, and I didn't know whether I was going to make it or not. I thought I was dead when I hit 
when I hit that wall. But this, these words came to me. There's power in that name. Mm -hmm. and, I, and in fact, I told my husband, I said, this is it. I'm gone. And he says, no, no. He, and he kind of held me there, you know, by his faith. But I began to say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I couldn't hardly, I could hardly speak because my neck was so twisted. And I kept listening for the bones to pop. And I thought, well, I'll be gone when the bone pops. I'm going to be gone. Yeah. But God wasn't through. So I had, and then everybody at the hospital said, they knew I was a, a, an author. They said, now you got something else to write about. I was just sitting yeah, here thinking. Yeah. I, I wonder, you said 14 <laughs> steps. I was thinking, I wonder if it was like on the, the 13th or the 12th when she said, if I get through this, I'm going to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> no, not for a while because I wouldn't even let Lee talk about it. It was so horrific. I really felt a spiritual, I felt, I felt spiritual warfare as I was falling. I mm. felt a battle going on for my life. And I, would, I couldn't even talk about it. It was so horrible. And it was weeks and weeks before I would, and, and even though the doctor told me I was a miracle, mm -hmm. he said, he, uh, the neurologist, after they did the MRIs, he said, um, he said, tell my family, he said, she's a miracle because God had hit her head in his hands. She doesn't even have a concussion. Mm. And the thing that I worried about was, uh, it, well, if you call it worry, I was concerned. Mm -hmm. I wanted my mind to be intact because I didn't want to, I wanted to be able to write. Right. So I went through some harrowing times. So I am writing a book now Praise based God. on that. Praise so, God. And that's going to be called Twilight Time. Twilight Time. Twilight Time. We have those dark times now. <laughs> now, uh, Gerald, you were um, well, one of the uh, people that, are in the story. I don't know what your name is in the story. Barth. Barth. Okay, Barth. Yeah, I did read that name. So you're you're Barth. Now, tell us a little bit about how your faith was affected during this dark time uh, that inspired this novel with your wife, Kay Turner. Well, I um, I was raised in a Christian home and uh, accepted Christ when I was just uh, 26 days short of 10, my 10th birthday, and uh, raised in church and. I was active in the youth ministry and uh, felt God's call to, to be a minister of uh, music. And so I've been all through the years uh, serving part-time in a lot of churches. <clears throat> 1985, a church gave me an opportunity to go into full-time ministry. So as I've been studying the Bible and, and, and working through a lot of things, and uh, in fact, after full-time, after I went full-time, I had a lot of people come in and lay their burdens on me, mm -hmm. you know. So I saw how God works in other people's lives. And uh, when, when it happened to me through Kay, it was, um, it was just one of those things that you just have to depend on God because you really don't have any other place to go. You know, medical people c can do so much, mm -hmm. but that's only through God's hands anyhow. So uh, now this this prednisone. I mean, I, I had pulled a hamstring one time, and I had to take mm -hmm. it. And I mean, it's a, a common thing that yeah, they right. give for for stuff. Well, let me make a statement about prednisone because I don't want a lot of doctors being real upset because we're giving prednisone a bad name. Prednisone, according to the uh, head of the psychiatric department at the University of Florida, he says that prednisone is a great drug for most people. 98 to 99 percent of the people who take it have no problem with it. It's, it's a very good drug. So this was extremely so, rare. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, in his uh, thesis that he wrote, um, one to two percent of the people who take prednisone will within four and a half to five days have developed prednisone psychosis mm -hmm. or steroid psychosis. And uh, what he wrote in, in his um, article is exactly what happened to my wife. She had gone to a computer class on a Monday, and she came home, and she says, I don't know a thing that, that happened in that class today. And that was the beginning. She never went back to work again. Mm -hmm. uh, she, uh, she started to just go downhill. What went through your mind when you discovered that she had this psychosis and you were, and you were being told that this was how she was gonna be, that she wasn't gonna? Yeah. 
wasn't going to come out of this. How, how did you cope with that? Well, first thing I started doing uh, is asking people to pray for her. Uh, the original diagnosis was uh, because they didn't know about prednisone psychosis. The original diagnosis was extreme anxiety and, and extreme depression. And, uh, and she spent a lot of time in hospitals and facilities. Mm -hmm. Nursing home. Nursing home for two months. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, she was just not responding to, to treatment. Mm -hmm. But a friend of ours uh, in my choir uh, called on a psychiatrist, and he said, Gerald, I know one that probably can help your, your wife. And so we took uh, her to see him, and, and he said he could. But then when he had her to check into a, a psychiatric unit at Mary Black Hospital, that's when we learned that he had diagnosed her as having dementia mm. and early onset Alzheimer's. I, uh, I, I don't know anybody that's ever come back from, right. from that kind of diagnosis, and I'm not sure the diagnosis was right, but something was still going on. Mm -hmm. And she came home, and, and she was just like she was. But uh, our daughter, <coughs> we have three daughters, our oldest daughter, by 15 minutes, <laughs> have twins, um, uh, was keeping her so I could continue working. And she started shaving her medicine down. But she was on a lot of medicine. Mm -hmm. and she, she started shaving it. She'd take the capsules and open them up and pour out a little bit. Next time she'd pour out a little bit more. And she started getting better. Mm. And we started using some natural supplements. And she woke up uh, October 2007 that morning and she came to me and she said, Gerald, I feel good today. Praise God. And, and it's, just, it's just one of those miracles, miracle that God had my daughter to, to, to shave that medicine and get her off all that stuff. The doctor, the psychiatrist, were wanting to put her on more, mm -hmm. and we didn't. Praise <laughs> God. We're going we're gonna to come right back, and sure. I, I want to hear more about this because this is just, uh, I know it was life-changing for you oh, guys, yes. and I know that it can... Uh, increase people's faith that is watching this. Uh, but, I mean, it takes God. He has to be with you and That's He has right. to guide you. We have to listen to Him. Right. We are right in the middle of this story and we've got nine minutes. I tell you, this program <laughs> goes by so fast. It's like, oh, I need another hour here. Now, you had, uh, before we went to this song, you had said that your, your daughter uh, had begun to take the pills. Now, the doctors wanted to put her on more, yeah. and but she had begun to, to wean her off of them by right. taking some of the pills mm -hmm. dropping some of them out mm -hmm. and putting them back together and giving them to her. And yeah. she started coming out. And you said uh, one day she got up and what did she say? Well, she came to me uh, and said, Gerald, I feel good today. And uh, that was just the beginning of her just coming out of this Praise God. Uh, illness, sickness, depression, whatever it was. She had lost down to 90 pounds. Mm. It was just like skinny bones. And uh, she started eating, eating healthy, and uh, gained her weight back. And, and Emily Sue can tell you that uh, she started smiling, which she hadn't done in a long time. Her emotions were just about gone. Mm. And uh, my mother died during this time and uh, after she had started getting better. And uh, it, that was the first time I had seen Kay cry in almost six years. Mm. Uh, she, she was so silent. She laid on her right side in a fetal position on, on the sofa during the day and then in the bed at night, and that's, that's all she would do. And uh, she only ate pimento cheese sandwiches. Mm. I mean, that's all she would eat. And uh, we, we had great neighbors who would make some uh, their own recipe for pimento cheese. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what she would eat. And, uh, yeah, night. she loved it. But and then when she would take her medicine, let's say it was due at eight o'clock, she'd watch the clock. Seven fifty-nine. She wouldn't do a thing. She had to wait till it clicked on eight o'clock, and then she wanted her medicine. I mean, uh, it was OCD, I think. <laughs> yeah. I, I, when you were saying that, I was thinking I understand but, uh, that completely. But, yeah. but she came out of all of that. I can tell you that. We had people praying all over the world. Mm -hmm. we, our daughter, one of our daughters, the second of the twins, lived in Africa. They are missionaries there. They were. They're still missionaries, but they've moved back to the States now. And um, 
she, uh, uh, I, I, I kind of lost my train of thought, but she didn't know what all was going on. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, she knew a little bit about it, but they all wanted their mother back. I bet they and were she excited. Was, they were excited, everybody was yeah. excited. But oh, I was talking about prayer. In, they were in Africa, and we had people in Africa praying. We had people in uh, uh, Guyana, South mm -hmm. America praying. Yeah. I've been there several times. And so I, I can say without feeling like I'm exaggerating, we had thousands mm. of people praying for her. And, well, God healed her. And, and you know, it, it, sometimes God will just heal. Yeah. I, I, I've seen God do that many times. Yes. But then sometimes he, he guides us and we listen. I mean, uh, like what your daughter did. Uh, now, what, did she feel inspired to do that? She felt like God was leading her to yes. do that? Yeah. Yes, I talked to her before the program tonight, and uh, it, it's just, she knew instinctively, and I'm sure that's the Holy Spirit guiding. Mm -hmm. She knew instinctively that she was on too much medicine, and she started weaning her down. You know, God healed her, but he yeah. healed her through exactly. the weaning yes. down. And we put her on some natural supplements that were recommended by um, well, a nutritionist, mm -hmm. and, and that helped too. Mm -hmm. But all of that was put together by God. And I can look back and see it now. Mm -hmm. I didn't necessarily see it then, but I look back and see what God was doing. I always believe that you know sometimes God will take you home and heal you permanently. Sometimes yes. he'll heal you miraculously, mm -hmm. but sometimes he uses doctors and surgeons and guess what he created them and he gave them the knowledge and he all the stuff that's happened in the past to get doctors where they are with the information that they have he he allowed them to learn that just for those cases and you know we we never in, in, the Bible says in all things give thanks to God and that's why because all things came out of God that's right. uh, um, uh, we only have a few minutes uh, Miss Harvey could you tell us a little bit about the Billie Jean character. Okay, Billie Jean. Billie Jean uh, is, she's one of the miracles in the book, too. Mm -hmm. uh, and the real Billie Jean, I couldn't, I tried to name her something else, but I could not name her anything but Billie. <laughs> so my Billie, the live uh, specimen, is Billie Jean. But in the book, she's Billie Jean. And that's not, that's about the only difference. Uh, because in the book, the faith is there. Mm -hmm. But Billy, uh, Billy McGregor and Bill McGregor are close friends of ours. Lee pastored them back years ago. And we reconnected when we moved back to, to Greer and started to praise Cathedral. So we reconnected with the McGregors. Well, Billy uh, told me when we reconnected, she said she had been diagnosed with bone cancer. And so I wrote this book during this time. So that she is a woman of faith, and she is my sister. Hmm. And uh, in, so she has, she has survived bone cancer six and a half years. Praise and that God. is Amen. kind of unheard of. But I, she is a woman of faith, and she's going, I want everybody to pray for her because she's going, I think, in another week or so for more blood tests. And she says, and then I'll get my good report. So let's pray for Billy. All right, we sure will. Well, we've got a few prayer requests that um, you know I want to mention before we're getting ready to close out in about three minutes. Uh, one is Billy Jane, uh, bone cancer. She's been mm -hmm. uh, living with bone cancer for six years. Six and a half. Six and a half years. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we also want to mention Kay Turner, right. uh, Gerald's wife. She wasn't able to be here because uh, she's uh, sick right now. So we want to mention her. We had a, uh, a guy named Ray called in and he has prayer for his daughter who uh, has been abused physically and mentally. Man, you're talking about bondage when someone mm -hmm. is abused that way. Um, we have a, a, another guy, Doug, who had a heart attack. We want to pray for him. Uh, this one is always a huge one for me uh, that I always feel my heart for is uh, a lady named Mary called and she's got uh, pain in her neck but she also has marriage problems. Uh, they may be related, you know, a lot of times mm -hmm. the stuff that you're going through, I mean, worry, it affects you mm -hmm. physically. Yes. Um, <clears throat> uh, another woman called and uh, she's, 
requesting prayer for a Joshua who needs a job and a healing for his grandmother. Uh, a Charles called and he needs help from God. That's all it says, needs help from God. You know, sometimes you don't know what to say. It's mm -hmm. just, have you ever been at the, well, I just heard your story. I know you have. <laughs> Where you're just, you can't say nothing but just help, yeah. help help over and over because you don't know the words you don't know what needs to be said and it's during those times that I I believe that the Spirit of God that's inside of us is is praying mm -hmm. because the Bible even says in Romans 8 that uh, sometimes we have infirmities and we don't know how to pray as we ought to pray right. and the Holy Spirit prays there are so many times where I couldn't utter a word and God cares for us mm -hmm. and he, he lives inside of us and he prays mm -hmm. for us and those are groanings. Can, uh, I add one more to the prayer list. I have a granddaughter going through um, tethered cord surgery. She's had two, looking at a third. Okay. So her name is Chloe uh, Carter, and just add her to that. We sure will. We're going to close the hour out uh, by praying for these prayer requests. Uh, we want to thank um, author Emily Sue Harvey for being with us tonight. Uh, get her book, Cocoon. I'm sure we um, uh, have her information that we can put up. And, and also thank Gerald Turner for being with us.